Who would have thought that Nebraska's first ever five-star QB would sign on after a five and seven season when the offense only averaged 18 points a game? I know there's always a last minute big name flip close to signing day, but seriously, who could have predicted that Dylan Rayola would bail on a contender like Georgia for a rebuild in Lincoln? And I don't want to sound ungrateful because this could go down as the biggest recruiting win in Matt Rule's career. The first five-star recruit at Nebraska since 2005, reloading with a top four QB in the nation after working with one of the worst quarterback rooms in Division I football this last season. If they succeed, this will go down as one of the greatest college football comeback stories of all time. But if they fail, mm, they cannot afford to fail. We've got to talk about what it costs to get Rayola to Lincoln, the NIL deal, and his path to success at Nebraska. But I want to start with what went down this past week and how he went from Georgia lock to Nebraska signee. Let's go back to last Monday, the day that Matt Rule asked Kyle McCord and his dad to fly out to Nebraska to try and finalize their deal and lock in his next QB. We already know McCord's dad's wound a little tight, so imagine how pissed off he was when he walked into Matt Rule's office and heard that Dylan Rayola just texted Malachi Coleman and some other receivers to let him know that he was coming to Nebraska to get the program back to where it belongs. Now, I wasn't there, and I don't know what was said, but I'm going to guess since Rule had no idea Rayola was still in play up until the night before the McCords were set to visit, that there was a very tough and probably an uncomfortable conversation the day they got on campus. Fast forward to Wednesday, and now Rule's had the chance to confirm with the Rayolas that he's 100% in, and we can assume another conversation took place before McCord's camp confirmed to Pete Nakos that they were no longer considering Nebraska. And the only logical conclusion I could come to after that one was that they didn't want to run the risk of any early season struggles that led to Dylan taking his job since he's the golden boy in this scenario. And like I said before, Rayola and McCord share the same QB coach. Shout out to the comment section for bringing that to my attention. But I'd have to imagine that he was somehow involved in this thruple between Derek McCord and Dominic Rayola. But I don't want to get too far off track. Something probably went left in Dylan's conversations with Georgia last Saturday, and I think the family's love for Nebraska was just too much for Kirby Smart to overcome. Remember, Dominic really wants his boys to play in Lincoln, so if there's anybody we can thank for securing the flip, we gotta thank him. I'm gonna be honest with you right now, there are some pieces to this puzzle that I had to leave out because there aren't enough people who know a lot of these details and I can't give up my sources, but I can tell you about the NIL deal. So let's talk about what it costs Nebraska to get him and whether or not he was worth it. Start with the fact that taking Dylan meant they lost Kyle, and it could have meant they'd lose Daniel Kalen too, but it looks like he's still good to go since he canceled that Michigan State visit. McCord wasn't great at Ohio State, and he wasn't going to turn into the five-star QB that he was projected to be coming out of high school, but he was good. He protects the ball, he limits mistakes, and he's consistent enough to win the job. Here's the issue. You only get one year with him. He wasn't a playmaker. He doesn't run or do anything Dylan can't do, and the only real upside there is that he's done it for a year at a high level, so you know he's a safe bet. Was it worth sacrificing a year with McCord to hopefully get three years out of Dylan? 100%. And if Kalen wouldn't have come, would it have been worth losing him too? 100%. Rayola's a program changer. He's a face. He's clean cut, has swag, dresses well. He's got that Joe Burrow potential. Daniel Kalen's cool and he'll probably develop into a good QB, but we're talking about going after a guy who has the potential to get Nebraska back to be in Nebraska. But that's just the recruiting cost. What about the financials? Last Friday, I was told they locked in two and a half million for four years, which breaks down to 625,000 a season. And on the surface, that might sound like a lot, but think about Dylan's economic impact if all goes according to plan. Nebraska could be winning nine or 10 games each year he's there, which means they're a potential playoff team in this new format. Big name receivers and running backs are gonna be more inclined to sign on if they know the leader on offense is gonna get them plenty of touches. Wins mean the fans are going to be filling the stadium, which means they're going to be spending at the bars, the restaurants, the stores. And the last time I went to a game, I spent $40 on Dippin' Dots, $80 on clothes, at least $200 on food and drinks that weekend. And that doesn't even include the cost of tickets or a place to stay. If the team wins, then when the university or the 1890 collective sends a letter out to the 200,000 Nebraska alumni asking for a $100 donation, people are finally willing to contribute again. 
$625,000 a year might sound like a lot on the surface, but if Dylan's who these coaches think he is and he can live up to that five-star hype to Lincoln, Nebraska, he's worth every penny and more. After McCord fell through, I really thought Rule would still pursue a transfer to bolster that room. But the more time that went by, the more I realized that this ship sailed. That staff wants to build from scratch. They're not pressured to win tomorrow like Scott Frost was when he went and got Casey Thompson. They have a QB room, Purdy, Rayola, Harburg, and Kalen. They're not afraid to start freshmen. So why would they be afraid to roll with the highest rated recruit on the entire roster? I think Purdy stays and I think he enters the offseason with the mindset that he's QB1 next year. But is that how it'll actually play out, or is Rayola ready to go right away? There are three issues with starting a true freshman at QB. Number one is size. Usually these guys need a year to add weight and get stronger, but Dylan's enrolling early and he's already big enough to play in the Big Ten. Two is the playbook, but Dylan's played at four different high schools, which means he's had to learn four different playbooks in the last four years. You're telling me he gets nine months to learn this one? Yeah, he's going to be fine. And three is experience. It's one thing to be a small town kid playing inferior competition your whole life, but it's another thing to play at a big time high school against other power five recruits. Adrian Martinez is a great example. He played at Clovis West in Fresno and then come September of his freshman year, he won the starting job and he looked great that season. Dylan's already played on the big stage. I think the real question we got to ask is does his skill set work with the personnel they have right now and the offense that Rule wants to run? I don't know if you've seen him play, but here's what you got to know. Dylan's an elite ball distributor. He gets the ball out quick. He makes the right reads, gets through his progressions. There's none of that staring down a receiver nonsense or getting nervous so he throws a pick. He's a decisive passer with a stronger arm than Quinn Ewers, and he gets the ball out on time where it's supposed to be. And this all sounds great, but being a distributor means that he needs guys to distribute the ball too. If he's not the playmaker, then the weapons around him need to be. If receivers can't get open, he's not going to scramble and run like Harburg or Purdy did last year. He's going to burn the play or he'll try to throw it into a tight window and force his guy to come down with it. He can move and he's not a statue, but he's not a dual threat or a Patrick Mahomes who will run around to keep a play alive for 20 seconds. Jalen Lloyd looked like he could be the second coming of J.D. Spielman, so I wouldn't be surprised if he was Dylan's favorite target, but guys like Alex Bullock, Malachi Coleman, and Thomas Fedoni are going to have to get themselves open if we want to see the best Rayola has to offer. I think the most important thing for now is that he's reliable. He protects the ball. He won't throw picks. And if his role as a true freshman was to just be a game manager, he'd be overqualified, but he could do that job well. My number one thought this past week was what's the new plan look like in attacking the portal? Can this staff sell a proven wide receiver on the idea that Purdy and Rayola are much better passers than Sims and Harburg were and that the opportunity to be a more consistent contributor on offense is way better than it was last year? They've already been talking with former Oregon running back Dante Dowdle to add depth in that room, but now that Rayola's announcement's official, who else hits the portal after bowl games and starts to show interest in being part of a more dynamic offense now that there's a five-star QB a part of that room? I think the bottom line here and the important thing to think about as a Nebraska fan is this. There's going to be a lot of pressure on this dude. Just because he was a star in high school doesn't mean he's destined to be one at the next level. You got to give him time to grow into the role. Give the offense time to build around him. Patience is a virtue and although in 2024 we expect overnight success, it's okay to enjoy the journey, embrace the struggle, and if you stick around, you'll get to experience the reward. This was the fairy tale ending we needed to follow up a rough November, and I think we can officially say Nebraska won the offseason national championship. And right before I got on here to record, I saw that Dylan released his commitment poem, and since that's the first time I've ever seen one, I have to read it aloud. In the realm of college football dreams where purpose takes flight, enter Dylan Rayola, crafting his narrative in the night. Once lured by Georgia, where powerhouse glory gleamed, yet Nebraska's purpose in his heart brightly beamed. In the scarlet and cream where legacies entwine, Dylan, like Rogers, Rozier, and Crouch, a hero in the line. No longer a cog in some powerhouse machine, but a quarterback with an even grander ambition unseen. So fellow fans await with hope in the air for Dylan to choose his purpose to declare. In a weekend's decision, destiny calls to fulfill his purpose where a new dynasty enthralls. But I want to know what you think, so let me know in the comments below. Was trading Kyle McCord for Rayola worth it, or would you have rather had the proven transfer? 
Do you expect Dylan to start as a true freshman or will Chubba Purdy win the job this summer? And on a scale of one to 10, how surprised were you to see that he flipped? If I'm being honest, I would have bet everything that he was going to Georgia before we got the news last week. But this just confirms what I've told you so many times before. College football is the greatest reality show on TV. But that's all I've got for today. So until next time, thank you for being here and I will see you in the next one. Go Big Red.